Air Quality Monitoring Program and a Contaminated Land Program. Um, Amanda Banks is our Policy Advisor for Policy and Transport. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. And um, earlier this year, I think it would have been February, we both came here and gave you a presentation on how air quality is tracking in your district. And uh, we were mainly presenting on the previous year's uh, monitoring data and just giving you an update. So today we're presenting um, how air quality is tracking now since we've had another winter since we last saw you. And it's our intention to try and do this on an annual basis at the end of each monitoring year, give you an update. So just firstly to just recap, um, oh, also we, we provided a um, report to you um, and I actually um, omitted to provide um, information on um, two Rangi's monitoring data. We actually have a monitoring station there too, so I have included this in our uh, presentation for today. So in Taupo we have um, an ESH shed monitoring station located at Gillies Ave. And we've had that station there since um, around 2000. And um, what we monitor there is uh, PM10, which is uh, small or fine particles which are smaller than 10 microns. And these are particles that are usually produced uh, from sources such as combustion sources. And the very fine particles can get into your lungs and hence um, generate um, respiratory and, and cardiovascular health problems. And so these are the, um, the main contaminants of concern in our region and, and elsewhere around the country, mainly um, sourced from wood burning, but also vehicle emissions in the industry. And the National Environmental Standard sets a concentration <coughs> standard or threshold, um, which is 50 micrograms per cubic metre. So the magic number there is 50, and that's the concentration we we don't really want to we don't want to be exceeding to ensure that we are on top of um, health problems. And um, the National Environmental Standards does allow though one exceedance per year. We also have a guideline for when you average um, PM10 concentrations over a year, and that guideline is no more than 20 micrograms per cubic metre. So if we look up at our um, Table here we have um, a history of monitoring data for the for the um, years since 2001 when we began monitoring. The first uh, six years up to 2006 we were only monitoring one in every three days, and so um, the data is a little bit limited there. So it's, well, we did have. Um, a number of exceedances in those years, uh, it was likely that the exceedances would have been somewhat more than that because we were only monitoring a third of the time. Um, from 2007 onwards, we were monitoring every day continuously, and we certainly had um, a number of exceedances in um, those sort of middle of the years, 2006 through to 2009. And over the last three years, we've had no more than one exceedance. So um, we're quite happy with how things are tracking there. Um, we, uh, we also, when we look at the annual average, the annual average is coming down as well, which is a very good sign because the annual average is believed to be a um, very big indicator on how it might be affecting your health. And uh, having, having the annual average um, well below that 20 is very good. So if we look at the um, data displayed in the graph form here, we can see over the last few years, uh, those number of exceedances have certainly dropped down. The first uh, years over up to 2006, I've just highlighted that we were monitoring one day and three, so we would have likely have had more exceedances over that period. And when we've um, done some statistical analysis of the trends, um, it's indicating that we are definitely getting an improved trend when we look at the winter averages, and compare the winter averages for each year, there's an improving trend, and it's starting to look stronger, especially after this year we've just had. So the National Environmental Standard has set a target of no more than one exceedance per 12 month period. Uh, from 1st of September 2016 onwards for air sheds such as Taupo. So any 
polluted air shed, and we um, a polluted air shed is an air shed which has more than um, when your average oil exceedance is for the last five years, you have more than one exceedance per year, then it's classified as a polluted air shed, and we have a 2016 target to get it down to no more than one exceedance. Um, the way things are tracking, it looks like uh, GLPO will definitely have met this requirement well before 2016 without any requirement for intervention. Um, could, so Tiapo could certainly come a non-polluted air shed um, after we've had five years of no more than one exceedance. And this will be quite important because um, there's in the national environmental standards there's a, an offset regulation, which means in a polluted air shed, if a new industry comes in and wants to discharge the antenna into that um, air shed, or an existing um, industry that wants to increase their PM10 emissions, then they'll need to, if they, their PM10 emissions are significant, they'll have to offset those emissions by, um, for example, um, taking out a number of wood burners and replacing them with heat pumps or something like that. So that's obviously um, uh, something that would likely perhaps put industry off um, looking at a polluted air shed because it may be a bit more difficult to set up in a, in a polluted air shed because of that regulation, or um, well the cost will be higher. And um, I've determined that by the 25th of August 2015, if we have no more than one exceedance over the next two winters, we should certainly see um, this air shed being classified as an unpolluted air shed, and the offset regulation will no longer be in place. Uh, just to give you a brief update on Turingi's uh, monitoring data, we have a um, monitoring station um, located at Rohunga Road, and uh, when we look at the monitoring data here, uh, we're not even getting anywhere close to exceedances. Um, we've been monitoring since uh, 2009. Um, the way things are tracking at the moment, we're looking at probably keeping that monitoring station in there for another year and then taking it out and moving it on to some of the other air sheds around our region that are, haven't been monitored. So we're looking at doing a three-year monitoring program. If we don't see any problems, we'll move on the monitoring and pop into another air shed. So that we get round all of about 20 air sheds in our region. So just in summary, uh, monitoring indicates that air quality in Galpo is improving. No exceedances are to date have been um, observed in Turangi, and uh, we will continue monitoring for at least one more year there. However, it is important to maintain this trend as uh, changes such as wood burner operation, prevalence, backyard burning, and even changes in local weather patterns could have reversed this trend. So, Jonathan, how many um, monitors have you got in the 20 year sheets at the moment? We've got uh, 10 monitoring stations um, um, across <coughs> nine um, year sheets. Um, in Hamilton, we've set up a, um, we've got two now running there, one on both sides of the, uh, one on the east side and one on the west side of the river. So how many out of those 20 have you monitored? Is it the other team? Uh, so or? Yeah, the other team. So we're starting to, um, Cambridge and PR and Mutual are going to be uh, monitored over this, um, from next year on this. If Delpo continues to um, exceed a number of times and so on, and you decide that Telpa has to do something about these exceedances. How are you going to differentiate between the um, the uh, perpetrators of that exceedance? Would they be industrial, or you continue identifying that they're probably house um, fires? Uh, yeah, well we.